I don't think I'd be the person I am today without growing up by the sea. I've lived in sort of Norfolk, like the Sharing area, like my whole life. 19 years of being here, I suppose. I'm, yeah, completely and utterly attached to this sort of part of the coast. We lived for 28 years as a family in Northamptonshire. When I retired, we decided we wanted to live in this beautiful part of the UK. We were familiar with it. It was a place that we liked to be. You go to a place and you suddenly think, yeah, I could live there. And you do get a sort of attachment to, to a place. Norfolk's in my bones. My family have had long connections with Norfolk. My parents moved here and we used to come here on holiday. Um, I came here in my mother's womb, I'm told. There's nowhere else like it in the world, I think. Never wanted to leave. We went to Toronto, lived there for some time, and then Mum and I decided to come home. And I'm very glad we did, because I missed Norfolk. When I was younger, literally, we just used to, every day in summer holidays, just go down the beach. Getting down there at like eight, nine o'clock, having breakfast and then just spending the whole day down the beach. It's just like them sort of little things that I'd like remember most. So I started surfing when I was like four or five, going for a surf. It's just so, so relaxing for me personally. It's just nice being in the water. When we were kids, the first person to see Winston Church Tower as we drove along the road into Winston got a sweetie or something, I can't remember what, but I know it was very exciting. My grandmother, um, was heavily involved with the church. She played uh, organ every time there was a service. My great uncle, Clarence Albert Pratt Porter, was rector of Winston, and he died in the sea in the riptide, rescuing one of his choir boys from the sea there. He's obviously very well liked and remembered, even to this day. Um, there's an annual service at the church, uh, to which I'm always invited, which is very sweet of them. My mother and I used to go and clean the silverware. There was just such this strong feeling for both of us about the building itself. I just loved it. I had a nice, comfortable, homely feeling there. It's familiarity makes it feel like home, I guess, and I've raised my family here and we always to take the children to the beach. Now I take my grandchildren to the beach. My children are desperate for their children to have the same experiences they had. My happiest memories of when we used to go down to places like that and get behind the dunes and make a, a kind of base, um, got some sandwiches and, and we'd spend the day on the beach. The Pilgrim Shelter is a little building. It was built in 1934, but I think it was about 15 years ago the church realised that they couldn't really support the Pilgrim Shelter, so they gave it to the village as a community centre. Unfortunately, we had a coastal engineer who said that the building really only had a 20 year useful life because it's only 50 yards from the cliff edge. And, and that really started this discussion about, okay, if we've got a community centre, it is being well used. What are we gonna do when it's no longer safe to use it? There was a community need for a new building. Six years ago, we decided that we would try our luck and see if we could actually get funding together to build a new community centre. Uh, and we were lucky enough to, to succeed. It's truly remarkable what you can do if you really focus on, on where you are. And you've got a group of people that want to make it happen. Everyone knows everyone is sharing them, do you know what I mean? Like there is just such, it's such a massive local sort of community. Yeah, everyone just knows everyone. and. It's just nice sort of to be a part of that. Becoming a lifeguard for me, it's sort of like, it's a personal achievement because obviously I've, I've, I've worked up for it as, since I was like 10 or 11. Like that sort of person on the beach which everyone sort of looks up to, it's nice, it's good. When you're working in the summer, like all the local kids are down there every day. Like you have kids who like obviously come over and like high five you. The coast will always inspire me and it's a therapeutic place to be I think anyway when you're looking at the sea it's a wonderful uh, friend in a way. It's also very unspoilt it's a bit of a cliche but it's true with Norfolk you can 
walk and think you're 500 years back and it wouldn't have looked that much different. You've got all the history and the things that happened there that are going on there. It's that kind of blend of those two things, I think. There's always something to, to, to get, to bring back, um, to think about. And that inspired me really to start writing poetry, which I've done for 30 to 40 years now. Outside, a congregation of flints, rock hard, napped smooth by collision, each with a fractured face like a distant nebula, caskets of sea space, resolute against the slap of time. My mother loved larks, and when my mother died, she wanted her ashes spread somewhere on the dunes and I can remember her ashes going down and as they did so there was the song of a lark up in the sky and that was that set us all off that was a very sad moment that was it's not I think until you come to a place like this that you realize just how beautiful uh, it, it actually is. And we're also very lucky that we live in an area of outstanding natural beauty. We have some of the most remarkable beaches that you could possibly think of. I think me and all my friends definitely have an attachment to Sheringham. And I think most of us will, I suppose, bring our, if we do have kids, bring our children up there, definitely. I, I couldn't imagine not living by the coast now, if you know what I mean. Like, I couldn't, I don't think I could live in, like, the middle place. I, I'd have to be by the beach now, like, I'd have to be. Anybody who visits regularly builds up that kind of catalogue of, of experiences that is part of them. One of the things that makes it so interesting is the diversity of the, of the coastline. Uh, and I think that's part of the magic of living in a place like this. I think everybody ought to go and see something on the East Coast to enjoy.